Hi, this is Lisa Johnson, and welcome to Make It Monday. Today I'm going to share with you how to color embossed images with Copic markers. You'll find that using dark cardstock with this technique works best, and it has such a beautiful contrast that it really pops those images out, as you can see here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare our cardstock, our card base, by a, using a destaticking tool. And this tool is one that I actually got from a different company. I think it's called an embossing buddy. And then stamp my image with Versamark. And I'm using an image from the Stitches and Swirls stamp set from Paper Tray Ink. Love this new set. Now one of the things I found with embossing powder, there's two colors I use pretty frequently, the clear and the white. And so I just keep them in trays ready to use in a cabinet so that they don't get any dust and stuff in them. And I keep a little piece of plastic. Can't even remember what that's from, but it works perfect. Just scoop it up, a couple flicks to do the excess. Now if there's any little extras hanging off the edges on my cardstock, I use a dry brush to pull off any of those little pieces. I find that my hands are just a little too bulky for, for doing that and I just don't have as light of a touch with my fingers. The heat tool is wonderful. It can use these for so many different things, but this is its main purpose. And I find that as I'm embossing, sometimes my cardstock will, will bend a little bit, kind of warp. So what I do is I do the outside and the inside. And as I, as I do both, it kind of straightens them out. That's my little trick with embossing. So here is a little show, showing of the contrast between the colored image and the white image. Do you see how different that looks? It just looks so much more finished when you add that colored effect to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is use YG13. It's a really bright green. But you could do this on dark brown cardstock with some beautiful fall colors. I would be hesitant to do this technique on white cardstock or light cardstock because it is really kind of hard to be perfect at doing it. Although you may have a steadier hand than I do. But for me, I really liked that I could not be perfect at doing it and still have a great effect. And I actually really like the contrast as well. So many great colors and things that you can do to to work with this on the dark cardstock with the white underneath. The next color I'm going to use is the Y15. And that just puts, I'm going to, it's a yellow color, then it's just going to go on the inside of where the flower image is. I use a really light touch, try to use just the pen tip real lightly over it so that I'm not getting a ton on the actual cardstock. You will have a little bit eventually, probably spill over. But if you're really, take your time and try to be as meticulous as possible, you should be able to get do a pretty good job. Now, I found that using like an OTT light and maybe even some reading glasses helps see those closer so you can really be fine at doing it. Okay, so this is RV13 that I'm using. Bright, bright colors. What's nice is this is another function of your Copics without having to worry about blending anything, but you still get a great colored effect. And it, it's permanent on this embossing powder, so it's fantastic. A little bit more around the edges here. So what I'll do next after I'm done filling in this going over these lines real carefully is um, I'll grab my zero blender and see where I can clean up any real obvious areas that I've kind of gone over. But I want you to notice that as I'm coloring, I'm drawing the pen toward me. You'll find that anytime you, you color, you're pulling the pen towards you is going to give you a little bit more um, control. And 
and that's why I move the paper a lot when I'm doing this technique. This is a great thing to do when you're watching a movie or something too, or listening to an audiobook, taking a little time coloring. So just remember, I've listed these um, colors in my supply list that comes at the end of the video. If you have missed any of those, you can just view those at the end. Okay, so now let's look for any of those little extra splashes that I talked about. And I have a couple, so let's clean those up now. Just one more. There we go. And it's usually really light. What you want to make sure is you just are on the paper and don't go right on the embossed image. Now I'm going to take a N1 gray colored marker and just add a little shadow underneath to pop it up just a little bit. And this, is, this isn't a necessary thing to do, but I just kind of like the little depth that get a gets added to it. And I want you want to make sure that if you're going to do this step that you don't go on the actual embossed image, just right underneath it. That adds a little extra dimension. You could even go uh, even further and take your marker and color in to add that extra shading with the colors that you were using. And believe it or not, even on this dark cardstock, some of that color just does come through. There we go. So the next thing we're going to do now is just punch these corners. And then it's time to add our pattern paper. I'm also using Sweet Blush cardstock, and I have a strip of that here ready to adhere first. So I want that layered under my strip of pattern paper. Have to admit that sometimes when I'm making a video, I have a harder time because. I tend to be sitting down to make the videos, but when I'm actually crafting, I stand up. I, it's funny how when everybody does some things differently. And uh, so, do you craft standing up or sitting down? That's that's a good question to to post a comment on if you if you could. So this pattern paper is from the Black and White Basics Pattern Paper Pack from Paper Tray Ink. There we go. Now to add some of my, my little bling that I've got here. I'm going to use a smaller crystal for around the flower. And I'm going to just use three. And the reason why is because there's three main parts to this particular image. You've got the flower head and the swirl and then the, the leaf part. And I want to just kind of add a little bit of fun to those without setting the image off balance in any way, shape, or form. It's always fun to add bling, but you have to make sure that you're balancing things off instead of just randomly putting it on. So I went ahead and pre-die cut and stamped this sentiment, and this is using fillable frames number 10 die, an inside and out thank you stamp set. Always try to double check before moving on, before that adhesive sets too strongly. And I'll tell you, even the slightest bit off, and I just go cringe a little bit. So I'm always tweaking everything as I'm as I'm working. You'll notice that there's a point on that frame, and it's fitting straight into where that flower is. There we go, and there's a finished card. Thank you card using stitches and swirls. Thank you for joining me for Make It Monday.